Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry and I am an independent consultant for Close to My Heart. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to take a moment before I cut anything down and show you the Stargazer paper pack so that you'll know exactly what we're working with and you'll see it before I cut it. I have a really bad habit of cutting the paper and then going, oh, I forgot to show it to you. So, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to show you the paper and then I'll stop the camera and I'll go cut everything down and then we can start with the, with the workshops. So the workshops all come with um, the professionally printed workshop guide. And what is different from the one that you can print at home is these are much darker and, and more crisp so you're actually able to see the paper and the cut lines easier but you're also able to see the subtle um, the subtle accents on the layouts now on the cutting guide to where before you, you would have had a hard time seeing the gray you would have had a hard time seeing the embellishments up here the professionally printed guide is just so much better and this comes with your kit so that's the first thing that comes with your kit you will receive a full roll of the light gray ribbon. You will receive a full packet of the Stargazer dots. Let me open these up for you. And these are the colors. Put them back in so I don't lose them. Let me put these here because these are not going to go over to my wire cut. You're going to receive enough photo squares to do all of the layouts. And the photo squares are just placement cards so that if you're making the layout without your actual photos, you know where to go back and put your photos. So you're going to receive a full kit of what you need for the layouts. A full pack of compliments. And I'm not going to open these up just in case there's something little because I have a habit of dropping it on the floor. And then I'm going to just quickly show you the paper pack. I'm not going to raise the paper towards the camera because I've got different lighting that I'm working with and I'm trying out new lighting and I don't want to make it do anything weird. So this paper is called Stargazer and is very space themed. It can be for a boy, but I had a girl that loved space, so I would use this for girl or a boy or in my case, husband. I am married to a very nerd. Um, and I say that lovingly. So I'm going to make sure to save this, these layouts for pictures of him, his friends, his little nerd friends that he loves. And um, make sure I do some layouts for him. On the flip side of the, star, of the rocket paper is telescopes. My husband, one of his favorite things to do when we go camping is sit out in the middle of nowhere and just look up. We don't have a telescope, but he just loves looking at the stars. So this could actually be incorporated into camping pages for us. This blue has different phases of the moon. So there's full moons and there's, um, is it called new moon when you can't see the moon? It's got little circles and then it's got little half moons. Just different variations of blue. You may not be able to see it on the camera very well, but it's very pretty. And then the gray is a constellation page which I really, really like. This, and you're not going to be able to see it on camera very well, it looks like the moon surface. How cool is that? And then this is little, like, hand-drawn planets. And a really cool stripe. that It has some, some distressing on it. And then some geometric patterns. And then some gray and white spaceships. And a yellow. It's almost not quite a honeycomb pattern, but close to a honeycomb pattern. And then the cut apart card. And it's both horizontal and vertical, depending on your layout. And then it starts over again because you get two sets. So that is the paper. I'm going to stop the camera and go cut everything down and I will be right back. 
Today we're going to be working with the layout one of Stargazer or in the cutting guide it's also called project one. We're going to be using the complements and we're going to be using the Stargazer dots and it says on the instructions to use the ribbon but I've made a change. I'm not going to use the ribbon this time on my layout. You're more than welcome to but I felt the need to try and do some stitching along the sides. I've missed stitching. I miss having it in my layouts. And I, I'm i going to go ahead and stitch on mine and, and show you how to do it. And if you enjoy it, you may follow suit. If you do not enjoy it, you can use the ribbon. Um, so a couple of things I've done is I... The colors in the papers for the gray is the pebble and the pewter. I went ahead and chose the pewter because it was a little bit darker. Which, which, add a contrast. The ribbon that I use is just DMC thread from the local hobby shop. And what I do is I take a swatch of our cardstock for the new colors whenever we get new colors and I take myself down to the local hobby store and I plop my behind down in front of the threads and I just match them up to the cardstock. And I write down what the tag number is. I make a little baggie and put the name on it. That's all it is. I typically buy about five or six skeins to fill up the baggie and then when it's time to sew I just separate the skeins because there's six strands per this here is six strands so I separated it into three strands to make it thin enough to go through the needle heads so I've gone ahead and separated some out and then we're going to be using the complements and on all of the complements except for the shiny ones I added some glitter mist. It's really, really faint. You may not even be able to see it on camera. It's not a close to my heart product. It's a product that I find on Amazon. But when I'm working with a larger, when I'm working with a larger area that my pen, here it is, that's a little bit too big for my pen, I like to spray because it gives a nice uniform coverage, does not take long to dry, and it doesn't take as much of my pen. I use my pen for smaller areas. So like if on here all I wanted to do was one star, I would have used my pen. But since I wanted to do all three of them, I went ahead and used my spray. So I'm going to set these aside so they don't get damaged. And I've already got my photo squares cut out and all of my cuts done, but I'm going to set those aside. And I'm going to start my stitching. So what I've done is I've already poked the holes where I want my stitching to be. So what I'm going to do is just set one aside. I'm going to take my favorite needle. I put some uh, scrap green thread around it so I wouldn't lose it. And this is just a little sewing tomato that I keep my thread on or my needles on. And I have, we have pokey pads, we have fancy you know things to use for sewing this is just a 12 by 12 piece of cork from the office store it's made to go on the wall as a cork board to make as big you know big or small as you want I love them because they're 12 by 12 and I can just set my piece of paper right on them so I've got my cork and I will try and stay in camera for this I may have to remove it out just a little bit so I can see to thread the needle This is just a cheap little threader. I buy these from Amazon, buy the 100 pack. I pop them in a mason jar. They do break rather easily, but I think I paid like $7 for 100 of them. Well worth it, but where am I gonna put you? Oh, let's put you right there. I'm gonna hang him right off my tomato. So I'm gonna match up the ends of my thread. So I get it even. And then just for me, I'm going to snip and then just make sure it's all straight. All right. So your first stitch, you're going to go through the hole and then pull it through. 
and I'm going to make it, can you see that? Yes, good, okay. Pull it all the way through. Now some people tie a knot in the back. I don't like the extra bulk, so I'm going to just take a little bit of tape and adhere it down. And then what you do is you just go in the next hole. And when you're first starting with new thread, you're going to have a lot of thread on the end. It just takes a bit of coordination. And then you're going to go back through the other hole. And just keep doing that stitch until you're all the way around. Now, sometimes when you're working with brand new thread, it likes to do this on the back. Just take your time, be gentle with it. I fully believe these knots are now the reason why I wear reading glasses. There we go. But it's a good sacrifice. Okay, so I was wondering why I was at a weird angle and why this felt awkward. Because I'm used to sewing this direction and not this direction. So to me, I was sewing backwards. So let's try this again. I just couldn't get a good flow going because I was sewing the wrong direction for me. There we go, that's much better. Also much faster. So if you feel like for some reason it's not comfortable, because it should be comfortable, it should be enjoyable, it should not be a chore. All I did is I went ahead and snipped off, tied it off, and went to a different direction. Um, Yes, it takes a bit of time to do it this way. Yes, the machine is much faster. But I like the look of hand stitching. And I like to just take a book and listen to a book. That's what you saw in my headphones a second ago. Um, I just listen to a book or watch a movie or something and just stitch to my little heart's content. But it adds just a wee bit of texture. I like it. Without adding a lot of weight. And it also, depending on what you're sewing, can also help attach like a heavier, um, if you're doing multiple mats or multiple layers, you can use a bit of stitching, like an X, you know, an X stitch or something to help it hold it down to the paper. So that's an, another good thing about using thread and needle. So, I have myself a little bit of tea. I am listening to The Keeper of Lost Things, which is um, an English book. So they're having cucumber sandwiches, which now I'm craving cucumber sandwiches. And they're having tea, so I had to go downstairs and make myself some tea. And I'm just stitching and enjoying my afternoon. So, um, yesterday we were able to get, I don't know if you're following the saga of moving scrap rooms, but we were able to get the rest of Kayla's furniture out of her old room. We ended up hiring a couple of teenagers for 30 minutes or so to help with the heavy lifting. Um, 
Kayla goes to school full time and works almost full time, so the likelihood of her getting home before spring break was not very possible. So we just hired a couple of teenagers to help with the heavy lifting. They went in and out in about 30 minutes. So we also went over to Lowe's and found some paint samples. So I slapped those up on the wall this morning and took pictures of it. And if you're on my Facebook group, which there's a link below in the comments, if you're on my Facebook group, I'm going to be posting pictures of just as we as we work. So today I, I posted the pictures of the paint killers and the one that I, I'm almost 100% positive we're going to choose. And then I'm also videoing or taking video of the work and when I'm finished I'll do a scrap room reveal. So Yeah, see, this is much more comfortable of an angle for me. And I'm sewing a lot faster. So I just want to get to where I can show you what to do when you run out of thread. Got one more. Okay. You don't want to get it to where you can't. You don't want it to end on this side. You want it to end on the back side. So I've got it ended. Okay. So I have another round of thread. I'll tape that down. Get my sweater. Decided to get out my smaller piece of cork that didn't take up quite so much room on the desk. I'm used to working with a larger space to work in. That's one of my goals for the new room is the space where I film. I want that to be my main workstation for crafting. Sorry, I had to thread the needle real fast. My main workstation for crafting so that I not only am filming workshops for you, but I'm filming my regular scrapbooking too. Um, my style of scrapbooking, my personal style of scrapbooking is a little bit different than the workshops. And I, I want to share it, but where I'm at right now filming is a little small. And I don't have my normal workstation. Across the room is dark. Um, or darker, not good for filming. So... My ultimate goal is to have the crafting side of my desk and the business side of my desk so that when I'm... Okay, look here, guys. Let's just move you. I've just stuck my hand all over the tomato. Um, so that when I'm crafting, I'm on the crafting section. When I'm putting orders in for customers, doing close to my heart business, that type of thing, I'm in the business section. And I'm not having to mix the two spaces. I actually have the new room. Hmm, hold on a sec, let me look it up. So, I don't know if you can see, but the desk is going to go from this wall to this wall till just past the window. So, it's going to end right It's going to end right about there. And it's going to start right about there. So, that's a pretty good sized desk. So, this section on this side is going to be the crafting section. And this section is going to be the business section, along with the second seating so that if my husband cares to join me, he can. Because we typically like to be in the same room when we're working. So, and right now, I have taken over both areas, <laughs> doing both creative stuff and business stuff. So he hasn't been able to sit in here lately, which he is greatly missing. Oh, I did it again. No, I didn't. Okay, good. Okay. So. There we go. That's better. So the ultimate goal is to do everything in one area and also get a more comfortable chair. Because while this chair is better than a bar stool, 
it's still not the most comfortable chair to work in. So, and the deck, deck, the deck that I'm using, the desk that I'm currently on was supposed to be a standing desk for my big shot, which it will go back to being in the new room. And so I'm using a bar stool or an adjustable height bar stool to sit and I've had to climb into this chair every time I need to sit down. So not the best option when you're a short girl. Okay, so I'm just about finished stitching. It is the next day. I am. Um, I got distracted yesterday, so I couldn't finish yesterday. But today, I had my London fog that I was craving so bad yesterday. I spent earlier today with my consultant sisters. I get together with them once a month. And we scrapbook and have a little crop once a month, just the three of us. Or there are three of us locally that would get together. There's a larger group of us that get together monthly for our meeting. But it was nice getting together with Dorothy and Sylvia today. And just having a bit of girl time and having some paper crafting. I took my, if you look in the seasonal catalog, the current one, seasonal expressions one, there is a recipe binder with, it's a full kit to make a recipe binder. And I ordered that last month just for my personal stock. And my daughter is just about the same age, or the, not the same age, but the right age to be gathering what she needs to have her own apartment. So she asked me to make her a recipe binder. So I ordered one. So I took that with me today. And I took a copy of my recipe binder with me. And I didn't I didn't copy every recipe that I have because there's a lot of stuff in there Kayla doesn't like. But I wrote down the stuff the recipes that are family traditions or things that she grew up with that you may not be able to find on the internet. Or like my pasta sauce, you know, my version of the pasta sauce or mom's version of potato soup or, you know, something like that. So I wrote those down and then I'm going to go through my older pictures of when Kayla was little. The pictures of each person, like, like my sister-in-law has one of the recipes. She came up with one of them. I came up with a couple of them. My dad, you know, my stepdad came up with a couple of them. So just find the pictures of the, of the recipes and the people that they belong to and put them together in that recipe binder. But my photos are above my head. There we go. So I may have to get my husband to reach it down for me. Because I am short. There we go. Let me wind this thread up real fast. I know puddles. I've got both babies in here with me today. Okay, so now that we've done the stitching, I'm going to just pop that there. I want my... Okay, so that's going to be the left side. That's going to be the right side. I know. I hear you too, Tinkies. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, that was really weird. I was missing some pieces, and I knew I got them because I double-checked myself, and I had accidentally put them back in the bag. So, I've got everything laid out. I'm going to go ahead and set the right side over, and we're going to work on this side for just a moment. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put the photo placement square on the mats. I 
And then we're going to place the photo squares where they go. Okay, so where they go is one there, one there, and one there. Now in the example, they've got ribbon, but I'm not going to do the ribbon because the ribbon is going to cross the photo right here. I obviously do not have my photo yet, so I'm not going to do the ribbon yet, but I need one of a kind. this out ever so gently. Okay, so let's pop out the negative spaces. So we need one of a kind. And what I did with this is I just took my shimmer spray and sprayed it. Give it a bit of a sparkle. So we need one of a kind. We need the big star. Oh, what's, okay, that's a sticker. Little stars, moons. Where's the moon? There's the moon. Okay, I don't think I'm using you yet. Alright, so for the one of a kind, it's chipboard. So I'm going to take my liquid glass and put it down with the liquid glass. Not that lid. It's this lid. Let's try it that way. I'm just going to put a little bit on the wider areas so that if there's any smushing, it hopefully doesn't smush out the sides. And this is just a different cap that I put on my liquid glass. I'll leave a link below for it. So one of a kind. Okay. So then we need the star. I've sprayed this one with the shimmer. The shimmer also. The star. Basically, I went through all, all of my sticker sheets except for the silver one and sprayed them with the shimmer. Just to add that a little bit of extra sparkle. Because it's supposed to be an out of space. We've got a moon. And then another star over here. And then blue star over there. Hold it down for just a moment. I'm going to need my let's put it over here. I want to put it there. Now what we're going to do is get our 
sparkle dots. And my yellows. Okay, guys, I use a craft knife to put my sparkles on. To me, this is the easiest way for me to put my sparkles on. But if you find that you would like to do this, please do, miss, do me and yourself a favor and be very, very careful. This is a blade and it will cut you. Um, I have been cut, I've been cut, and I didn't even know I was cut. So just be, be careful. So we're going to do a big, big one there. Like I said, they make placing very easy, but you also want to be mindful that if this slips, you can cut yourself with it. There's that, that page, and let me come over to the other one. And let's put this one down. Same thing. I'm going to put these down real fast. So again, the part that took the longest was the stitching around the edges. But to me, it adds a little bit of extra dimension. Um, ordinarily, I just put a book on my phone. I, I have an Audible account, so I just listen to a book, watch a movie, watch YouTube videos and just get all the stitching done. It doesn't take me very long once I get into it. But we kept stopping yesterday to kind of decorate my room too. So we stopped and did paint swatches. We stopped, we went to the paint store. Um, looked at buying a paint gun because with the amount of painting my husband has to do, I don't want his arms to fall off. So I bought him a paint gun. All right, so these are going to go like that. And yes, it is my husband that's going to be doing the painting. Because I am spoiled rotten. And I readily admit that. And he knows that I'm spoiled rotten because he's the one that does the spoiling. Okay, so these have gone down. That way real fast. I don't think I'll be needing that again. Okay, so now we have, I'm going to turn it sideways. On your layout, it's going to be up and down, but I want it sideways. You're going to tear a piece of your tape off. Put it down the side. And then you've got this word, epic. over the washi and then we're going to put all of our sparkles down so the first thing I need to do is put this guy down so of course this you can put there but I wanted it right there and that's why I moved everything up to reflect that
that's it for just a moment. Okay, so more, so more yellow dots, more knife. I really like this tiny pop of color the yellow gives. So there you go. Like I said, the one that took the longest to do, and it's the most enjoyable part for me, is the stitching around the edges. Um, I love stitching. I love adding the extra dimension to the pages. Um, it also helps hold down if you've got larger, um, chunkier layering. Sometimes the stitching will help you hold that down without using quite as much adhesive. So once I find the appropriate photos for this, I think this page is really going to pop for me. And I think I'm going to keep this one. So if you like the retreat that you saw today and you would like to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. If you would like to order your own kit, I have my shopping tab down in the description. Go ahead and go to that shopping tab. This is the Stargazer Workshop. You're more than welcome to watch the video the first time, order the workshop, get it in, and watch the video again. The videos will always be up, but the Stargazer Paper Pack will only be available until April or until it sells out. So until the end of April or until it sells out. So I definitely would not wait. Until then, I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.